So um, you've had uh, two sessions already, um, and the final one we're talking about today is around strategic locations. So um, you've all had the kind of key values and things that have come out of the task force, which underpin all of the streams we're looking at today. So the key findings that have come out um, around our strategic locations, and we just want to test these with you, check with you, see if they're right, there's any gaps in that that you think we need to pick up or, or give more focus to. Um, so as you can see, it's around creating vibrant towns and the role our towns play and continue to play and how that's developed and evolved through the pandemic, through the last five years, and what that might look like going forward and having that healthy towns that Tracy talked about earlier on, you know, how do we, how do we balance that and get that right across our network of really important towns. Um, that investment in infrastructure, and by that we mean, you know, there's the transport, there's the digital, there's the green, the blue infrastructure, you know, how does that impact and bring forward our strategic locations. Um, improving connectivity, so very much more about the sort of the movement of people, the movement of business, and, and how do we how do we get that right and, and the challenges probably and the opportunities that will come forward for that for Shropshire. Um, enhancing that visitor economy and the culture um, role and how that sits with our economic growth and how that sits with our communities and our people that we're trying to attract and stay in Shropshire. And that sort of sustainably connected communities and, and looking around housing and affirming that as well around that affordable housing, around that key worker accommodation, around some of the challenges around private rented sector as well and how that impacts on our workforce. So those are the key things that have come out through the economic task force, um, which you, you know we've been fed in from the business communities um, uh, across the county and, and with our partners. So um, I'm just going to open that up really at the moment. Um, so for Tim and I, you know, if there's people in the, if you've, if you've got questions online, if you've got questions in the room, you've got things you think, not quite sure if that's right, if there's things we could add to, um, just open that up for some discussion really. If anyone's got any thoughts on that. I mean, there's something there, isn't there, around, you know, how do our, 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 our market towns, so vital, so important, and that hinterland that go with them. So before we talked, you know, there's been talk about place plans, which sit across the county, as Tracy said, 18 of those, and how that works with the hinterlands around them, and how those towns have become that real hub to bring people together and people looking at those for more and more amenities these days. And actually, how does that work in terms of, of driving our economic growth? So, you know, is there anything there that, that we, we haven't quite picked up in this? Does that make sense? Do you recognise that? Tracy. Thank you. Andrew will come with the mic. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tracy Dark um, from Shropshire Council. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in, in the other groups is really that sort of link of businesses to businesses, the sort of support for businesses. And, you know, some businesses feeling a little bit in isolation. So... You know, they've, they've, they've probably sort of created the business through COVID pandemic, not sure where to go, you know, how to connect with other businesses. Um, found things like today, for example, really useful, you know, seeing people. Um, and, you know, so I think that's a bit of a gap. So I just wondered whether other people in the room that have businesses, whether they feel that as well. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, it's a really interesting point that has been raised around the networking. So there's a, this is a lot about physical, when you sort about strategic locations we automatically go to that physical location but actually the power through the pandemic has been that we haven't had to have those physical locations we've built our networks in other ways and actually how do we continue to do that through a digital forum and seamlessly i'm going to bring in chris taylor from uh, from shropshire council uh, thanks uh, chris i just wanted to touch upon the fact that we we spoke about that in, in quite a lot of detail earlier on so you know you probably want to maybe um ex extend the conversation in, into potentially other areas simply that we've obviously already highlighted that as a key theme about having those um, digital hubs uh, and, and virtual hubs, uh, which I think businesses certainly recognise as being a, an important aspect. Thanks, Chris. Another question. Thank you. Hello. And, and um, just to carry on that point, I think it's really important, you're right, to say where big businesses have felt in isolation, uh, obviously just because of geography of Shropshire anyway, it's, it's a huge area. But also, I just think, yeah, globally, we've all gone through that. And, and you mentioned that how nice it is to be in a room with people and have, you know, I've chatted to four or five people today who I wouldn't have emailed or whatever, but I've had really good, meaningful conversations, which are not necessarily business networking, but it's widening my uh, knowledge of how businesses work around here. So I think... It's important when we talk about digital, my, my business is very digital, that the importance of sense of place. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I really believe that to, to, to carry on these conversations, because 
our world is so transient at the moment. You can't be actually just having conversations like this, having those ability to maybe have a coffee or just to be able to collide and, and knowledge exchange is really, really important. And I know that the council is doing some work with developing the co-working hubs, uh, you know, so you could actually start to have a, well, what's been called a hub and spoke. So effectively, Shrewsbury being the, you know, the, the capital of Shropshire being the hub, but you've got Oswestry, which, uh, you know, yeah. all places which yeah. you can connect up. I think that's just vitally important for anybody who's running a business and just start up businesses or just to be able to find out who's around, just to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. So you know, digital is core, cool, but digital doesn't work without the colliding and real interaction with re real people. Just a, 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 I guess a, a, another point on that in terms of, because obviously we're all so talking about you know, having these centres of place and them being sustainable and just the improvement of um, you know, being able to use societal networks, just being able yeah. to walk. Inherently, I, I think it's a terrible capital <laughs> for that, yeah. just because of, of the space. But yeah, Shrewsbury, I think, could really benefit from a, a really, really changing how people move around that space mm -hmm. because it's not designed for that. It's, it's very much a car-centric place. Uh, and I think that could really, really help with sort of generating the town centres. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, I think Mandy's got a sort of to bring in. And while we're just going to Mandy, I was just going to talk a little bit around um, kind of our kind of growth corridors as well, the key corridors of growth. We've got the market towns, but um, that's sort of the M54, the A483, A5, and the A A41, A49. You know, we all know those. Um, and, and, you know, that's kind of been an area of some of our key sort of energy around some of the, the business investment and where we're looking to channel some of our strategic, more hard infrastructure investment into. So that's just something to think about through this as well. Thank you, Mandy. And I guess my point carries on a little bit from that, but um, improving connectivity, our physical connectivity is still incredibly poor and it is very, very Shrewsbury centric. And actually, you know, we are very reliant on people being able to drive. Yeah. We need to get people to be, able, we need to be able to move people around without being um, in cars. Um, improving our train services, whether that's local or, or mm -hmm. um, long distance, you know, to London or Manchester or Cardiff. But just getting somebody to work from um, Bishop's Castle to Shrewsbury, if you don't drive, it's incredibly difficult. If you live three miles outside of Clun, how do you get to work if you don't drive? So this is great, but I think just really thinking about what we can do, and I'm very aware of the cost implications of this, but how can we move people around? Because there are, whilst we can work digitally, there is always going to be the need. And as human beings, we do need that collaborative space. And there's a lot of jobs that need people in a place. But we also need a time frame. Because I think a lot of this is great. But when? When can businesses look to seeing that some of their um, issues around access to workforce can start to be solved? I think Steve was going to come in on that. I don't know, Tim, if there's anything you need to sort of talk about with the Shrewsbury movement. <coughs> well, I think Shrewsbury is just a, a good example of the challenges we face across the county, isn't it, really? I mean, I think it's, it is about connectivity. How do we, and, and about choice, you know, and I think that's what we're interested in is what does that choice look like? And I think, um, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to get into that sort of connectivity and accessibility and movement piece. And it is about choice. And, uh, and we accept that, you know, a lot of the towns at the moment uh, and, and, and the villages are heavily dependent on, on the private motor vehicle and, and how can we build some choice into that and I think how important is that in terms of joining up business activity as well as community activity so I think you know from from that sort of wider rural network and I know our colleagues have, have recently put a, a handsome bid into, into government to try and address some of that so I think we're on it but I suppose we need to take everybody else with us and make sure that we're maximising value out of that and I think you know for, for, for me in particular Shrewsbury you know clearly there's we always say that you know one of its greatest constraints is one of its greatest opportunities. Yes, it is currently a carbon town, but actually it was never designed for that. And actually, is there a way of rebalancing that, and then that then thrives through the business community as well. And we're hearing a lot around you know how the, the, there's particularly the small independents are benefiting from that. So how can we how can we sustain that? And when we talk about sustainability, yes, we talk about the green credentials and climate change, but actually there's something about sustaining business in the wider sense. And I think those are some of the things that we're just trying to understand what, this, what, the, what the mood feel is for some of this through, through obviously the strategic locations and where do we put our energy. 
and it's not exclusive to, to the, six, the big six, it's to the wider network and how they sit and, and how do we join those strategic locations up, which is really, really coming through strongly today. Steve, you want to come in? Uh, thank you, uh, Steve Brown, Shropshire Council. So just to pick up on some of the issues that have been raised and, and to highlight some of the work that we've got in train at the moment, so uh, on public transport, we submitted a £97 million expression of interest to the Department for Transport on Friday. I won't talk about it for long, but I could talk for hours uh, on this. So th this is about sort of connectivity. It is about moving people about. It is about improving bus transport, moving people to recreational, night time, economy working, you know, those social interactions. So we will see. You know, and we put a strong case to government for that and we will work that through as well as electric buses and cheap affairs and multi-operator ticketing. So all of that work has gone through and we've done a lot of work in understanding what those issues are. As regards sort of walking and cycling, we're actually in process now with a local cycling and walking infrastructure plan that is underway. We're working with a company called City Science on that. We'll be we're preparing that, we'll be out to public consultation, and that will prepare a plan that will allow us to, to invest and draw down funding and apply cent to central government for that work to be done as well. And then finally, we're also in train with our local transport plan, which will look at all of those connectivity issues, so buses, trains, use of cars, walking and cycling, and that will be going out for public consultation subject to approval around the February, March period. So you'll see a lot of work on that to pull all of these issues together and bring all of those changing circumstances post COVID that we're aware of. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. It's a good question, and I think and it was something I was going to flag actually before around as a business, you know, boundaries and, and county boundaries, they don't mean anything in terms half most of the time in terms of how you operate. You know, it's about doing your business and, and where you're located and 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 you know getting that across um, your area, reach, reaching your business network. So there is an element sometimes when we talk about like strategic infrastructure and linking those things up that we don't you know we don't stop at those boundaries and a lot of the work we've done with the LEP and with partners is around you know those cross boundary working and, and working through I think that's a very sort of specific question about a business sort of support element I think which we can have a little look at and, and pick that up with Jim probably separately um, you know about where his location is and, and I guess what what we're trying to do in terms of in terms of the business growth that goes with that really so um, so thank you for that uh, Mandy you're going to come back in and then Tracy sorry Sorry. <laughs> um, just really just going back to um, obviously great news that a submission's gone in. I just, and I understand there's public consultations happening, but businesses don't tend to respond en masse to public consultations. And if you've got proposals going in that businesses are aware of and can support those submissions, one would hope, particularly around connectivity issues and getting people to and from work or um, the nighttime economy, that should have more weight with government when they're looking at bids. Mm -hmm. And it's just a question, do you go out before you put proposals in? The proposal that was submitted on Friday, did that have business endorsement across the board to say how important it is to our economy? Okay, thank you, Mandy. Um, I'll bring Tracy in next and then pass back to Steve just to, res no, do you want to res respond to that first? But, um, Mine's just a Mine's just a really quick, quick response, actually, to Jim Preston. Like, come to Shropshire, you know, basis business here in Shropshire. It's a, a really good thing. Yes, of course, we don't recognise boundaries, but, you know, we want all businesses here in Shropshire to help Shropshire thrive. Thanks, Tracy. Just to, um, just to pick up on the point, on the future consultations, 
obviously we'll we'll make sure that that links into the businesses and all of those connections the buzz improvement bid uh, the approval of all the shropshire mps and also we consulted with the business improvement districts as as well because of the time scale and the constraints that we had that we had with that of the, the government funding so there is more that we could do but we are you know we are acutely aware of that thanks steve so just moving us on, if that's OK, I mean, lots of really interesting things that have come out which, which feed into this question, really, which is what are the key opportunities and challenges specific to Shropshire around strategic infrastructure? So lots of kind of themes that have come out already. Um, is there anything that, you know, is, is really standing out for you as being, you know, opportunities and challenges hand in hand, aren't they, in terms of how we look at those? Um, that you think, you know, we've talked about digital. We've obviously had a good debate about that in other conversations and how that's so important in terms of, you know, how businesses are operating going forward. Um, is there anything that you, you know, you think we need to be picking up for and making more emphasis um, through this economic strategy review, please? <laughs> Alessia, I think you were coming in. Thank you. Sorry, this is just getting back to the co connectivity and the digital side of things, but I don't know whether there's a, a scenario where businesses are making decisions on where to be placed within the county based purely on the um, quality of the broadband in a particular location because yeah. um, we find that when we you know we're letting agents we have businesses come in looking for offices and they'll say well we've been to look at a property on a particular street but we found out the broadband's not great there you know 300 yards down the road the broadband's fantastic uh, yeah. they never seem to understand why um, mm -hmm. this is just anecdotal so I don't you know this is ba not necessarily based on fact um, I had another company come to me just recently to say uh, for example, they've got some offices on Pride Hill. They believe they're in some kind of uh, twilight zone where, for yeah. some reason, in their office, they can't get broadband very well. Yeah. Yet, yeah. you know, 50 yeah. yards up the road, it's fine. Um, so I don't know whether people are impacting their business decisions on, on that issue. And does that, does that start to impact on perception as well? Because that's the reality, isn't it, you know? Yeah. But then does that start to get out there and people say, oh, well, you know, Shoopy's great, but, you know... Mm. And if people don't want to come and work in a town centre, then obviously... The mm. town centre economy, economy will, will suffer ultimately. Mm. And we don't want everybody working out of town. We want a nice balance of, of the two, really. Mm. Mm. I think that's just another really quick anecdotal thing. It definitely does do that, perception-wise. I mean, mm. there's the classic model of black spot. You yeah. know, you should drive past it. Everything just goes off immediately. Mm. So why would you put your business there? And that's why there's no businesses on Marble. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's a really important point around that whole location and investment and what's driving investment and I think let's see your point around you know what makes a business decision for people and is has that changed through through the pandemic because it is are people reassessing how and why they're locating in certain areas is there any change in the sort of market drivers I think that's something we're quite keen to understand a bit more about and has that been a benefit to Shropshire actually in terms of locations across the county that are now more attractive and, and with more opportunity Chris I think you wanted to come back in with yeah, some yeah. of the digital I mean, obviously digital does fall under my responsibility I suppose um, and has done for, for a number of years now and it's good that it's not just me that has that black spot around Mardle actually when I <laughs> go into the bank um, I mean, I think we have to reflect on how far we've come. If you think in 2014 we had really bad broadband in Shropshire and we've gone from about 24% to 98%. So, you know, we're in a very strong place, but there's still lots to do. I think positively for Shrewsbury, you know, there are plans in place, commercial plans. So we're expecting open reach to deploy in Shropshire um, in a number of places that include Shrewsbury. We've got competition building in, in Shrewsbury Town Centre as well with another provider that's moving in. So, you know, those things will change. I think you're absolutely right about perception. Um, I think sometimes um, it's a very confused marketplace with regards to terminology um, and getting access to information. And I'd always, you know, advise any, any businesses who need information on the landscape to, to certainly contact us at Connection Shropshire. You know, we can advise you accordingly on that, whether that's... Uh, fixed wireless broadband or um, wireless broadband, so we can, uh, we can offer some help on that. The other thing I just want to say is, um, you know, whilst we've got contracts in place that are still delivering superfast broadband, there is a big uh, programme that will come out. Um, probably over the next two years, we'll see some development in the gigabit programme. Shropshire is part of a very early phase. Uh, significant investment will be coming in as part of that, which will basically mean that we'll actually be building over some of the superfast areas that we've already built. But the priority has to be equity, equity, I've said the word, sorry, equity.
equity uh, with regards to ensuring that everybody has the same level of broadband. You know, what we don't want to see in Shropshire is that we start to build gigabit uh, connectivity in areas that already have good broadband speeds mm. and, and leave some of those, you know, in the more rural areas behind. So, you know, certainly from the council's point of view, our aspiration is to, to go to those, those rural areas as a starting point um, at the same time as obviously trying to lift up those other areas. Thanks, Chris. I just wanted to put a little question out there before we move on to the next bit, which was around, we haven't talked much about the sort of the, hou the housing kind of piece that goes alongside the employment. Um, and in terms of that being, that, is that a challenge? I'm sort of asking a question I'm probably nodding my answer to, but and I can see Mandy agreeing, you know, is that a challenge to that retaining of our staff to, to grow in our economy? And how do we kind of, what's the opportunity that we need to be looking at through that kind of, that piece really. I mean, there's a lot through the local plan that we're looking at clearly, but you know, that 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 is a big challenge when it comes to, to retaining staff in some of our kind of key sectors as well, particularly chatting before around um, in adult social care. Clearly that's a, that's an issue. Tracy. Thank you, Hayley. Um, yeah, and it's it's something I spoke about earlier on the sort of health piece really, but um, you know, thinking about our biggest businesses in Shropshire, you know, so the council, um, you know, NHS, and how do we help people who are in perhaps some of the lower paid jobs to be able to live in the area as well so you know I think the whole key worker homes is quite important and you know we've got policies in our local plan to help that through but you know we need to be doing more really so that people can afford to live in the area and work in the area as well so I think you're right it's um, quite a significant part in terms of our economic prosperity because if people can't afford to live here they can't come here and necessarily work here either, can they? Because, you know, it, it, it's not feasible. So I think we, you know, there's a big, a big bit of work around that, that that we need to work with our partners on. Brilliant. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Mandy, do you want to come in on that theme? Sorry, to Mandy. Um, I'll just move us to the final question to get you thinking before. Thanks, Mandy. Thank you. Um, two things. I absolutely agree about um, the, the property. I actually wanted to... Um, First of all, say that one of our real opportunities, but it's also a threat, is that we are um, we have a border with another country, Wales, yeah. and we need to be looking both west as well as east. Mm -hmm. But also, there is a threat that we have a lot of people that just go straight through our county yeah. and don't stop. So we need to be working on that. Um, but I do think there's huge opportunity for us as a county and as a business community to look to our partners to the west. Yeah. And then how those major routes through for exporting, you know, to the Welsh ports or whatever. Yeah. So we tend to look east and think that all the answers are from Birmingham. Yeah. Actually, I think we've got more opportunity for that, and that's also north and south. Um, but let's not make us, um, and actually I think I heard Leslie say it, but let's not make us a, commu uh, a commuter town. No. We want to be having the properties here for all people, particularly low, lower um, paid people. We do need to do something about the rental market. At the moment, if you're a young person, and actually, um, Darren, you mentioned this earlier, but if you're a young person trying to find a one-bed flat, you are literally having, you're in a bidding market at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we've got to do something about that urgently. Yeah, no, really good points. Thank you, Mandy. Um, which I think probably, I mean, they all sort of link, hopefully, in the questions in terms of, you know, the, the one thing that make that significant difference in helping us to deliver our strategic locations and, and, and what that's all about in terms of employment and housing coming hand in hand in that. So is this, is the, you know, is this something that's, you know, just there in, in your mind, you know, if we could really start to focus our energy on, on this issue or on a couple of specific things that we really should be, you know, this is all about our lobbying as well for funding, for all the mechanisms that are available to us, you know, we need to be pushing um, on a couple of really key points for Shropshire to get those messages, they should just be things we can all repeat back and, and be pushing and collectively aiming for. So I guess it's another question to you, you know, lots of really good stuff, digital transport, housing, you know, is there anything within that that we need to be thinking about a bit differently? Leslie, thank you. Not necessarily that relative to that, but I mean, we all recognise there's this massive short-term problem with um, employment at the moment. And I just wonder whether there's any short-term plan that could be put in place in regards to transport. Um, it'd be interesting to know how many of these people that are unemployed are unemployed because they haven't got access to transport to get them to the jobs. Yeah. Should we be looking at those <coughs> figures and saying, right, we need a bus from Oswald Street to Shrewsbury, you know, extra buses or whatever it might be, I don't know. 
yeah. brought help, you know, hospitality with nighttime employment. Yeah. Um, is there anything being done here and now, really, rather than the long term plan? I just wonder whether yeah. it's something we need to, to look at. I think they're really, that's a really valid point, isn't it? And I think um, talking in some other forums as well recently, it's been about, you know, um, schemes where, you know, there's, there's sort of almost that, it's that, it's that first month into employment that's the real struggle for people when they've been unemployed. They haven't got the funding to get them into the, the to get into the job, you know, to actually get from A to B to actually access the job. They've got the job, that's great. How do we actually help pump prime that? And I think that's a really, really important thing to think about when we're talking about um, future funding opportunities and what we should be asking for and how we structure our ask because that's sort of traditional schemes, um, you know, we've d done in the past, you know, sort of, um, moped and those sorts of schemes where people can hire you know they're given them for a month and they pay them back those sorts of schemes actually you know from our rural areas are so important and a conversation having before you know somebody in bishop's castle can't get to a job they've got a job they've done that really hard bit of getting the job but now they can't get to the job and, and the first month they can't afford the bus fare you know where how do we intervene in that market and, and what does that look like so i think that's a really important um you know when we're talking about actually connecting that all together so yeah i think that's something we need to pick up in this but it, it comes across the whole piece doesn't it employment and skills mm -hmm. and the locations but no good having the locations if we can't get the people there so that's uh, that's a really helpful point anybody else got anything right, to come I've Carl, in with thank one you. here that i've got on the streaming services from peter um which follows on perfectly from what you were saying there he said um the chancellor last week mentioned many towns and cities with regard to his um leveling up agenda Dropshire was missing from the list. Is this because we don't shout loud enough or we don't shout in a joined up enough way to make our case? And are we being joined up enough? Thank you. Thanks, Peter. I might, I might look, I might look <laughs> towards the floor for some answers. I've got a response, but um, I think uh, Councillor Picton can come in on that yeah, end. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Peter, leading Shropshire Council. Um, basically, Shropshire is in Tier 2, not Tier 1. Pretty much every single um, council that was mentioned last week is in Tier 1. I couldn't possibly comment about the... Um, political makeup of those areas either you wouldn't expect me to um, so I don't think we shout loud enough um, I don't I think we've heard a number of times today about we we do hide our light under a bushel there's lots of really good stuff going on in Shropshire and we don't make enough of it um, I was delighted last year that we managed to actually bring back the tourism into the council um, it's great that Andrea's here today already we've made a significant difference in the tourism offer just by having those resources and that's very much what today's about I just want to say one other thing that's been sort of in my head for the last sort of quarter of an hour I was part of a think tank a couple of weeks ago about employment issues within rural counties it wasn't just here it was Cumbria and other places and the one thing that we are suffering from, and it's a direct result of the pandemic, is that people aren't undertaking second jobs. Mm -hmm. So whereas we have people with full-time jobs also working jobs in bars in the evening. Now the think tank think that will change as, years, as the year goes on because people have, um, at the moment they're saying they've got enough to get by with and that's fine, but as things go on they will want to, to do that again. I'm not sure in Shropshire that that actually will happen. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to things like housing and stuff, our sectors that are inherently poorly paid, and I include the NHS and, and care in that, it's that jobs, those people that we desperately need to find good quality homes for. So for me, that's, if there was one thing that I could change, it would actually be to provide significant key worker housing very, very quickly, but good quality key worker housing. Thank you. Super, thank you. Um, anybody else got anything that they want to, to sort of put into that? Visitor economy was mentioned and, and, and culture and I think that was, um, you know, Shropshire is a great place to, it's a lovely place to live if you can afford to live here and you've got a home and, and it's beautiful and that's great. Um, so we need to, you know, it's, it's almost how do we use that uh, and, and to, to attract people but to get people to, to stay and locate their businesses and I think that's something that, um, you know, with that joining up and I think we have got an, a piece now where we, you know, working more collectively but but with the industry as well, you know, this isn't just Shropshire Council for how we're doing this. This is this is why we're all in the room. So I think that's something that, you know, in terms of those locations and those offers, I think is something we perhaps need to perhaps spend some more energy on um, and, and focus on. Chris? Um, yeah, I was just wondering whether... Hold on, just wait for the mic. Sorry, Chris. Hi, um, I'm Chris Hill from Shropshire Council. Um, just wondering about the whole role of the sectors um, and whether we whether we should be doing more to encourage the sectors. And historically, Shropshire Council has been quite active. We've got the 
the Enterprise Centre, but it's whether there is that sort of soft um, synergy of related activities that all come together that actually make people, A, want to live here, or businesses that w would want to grow. And we've already had hints of that with people saying, you know, we need opportunities to meet, we need advice. There are elements of that. We've got the growth in. But it's, you know, do we need an advanced manufacturing sector? Do we need a, a, a sort of centre? Do we need some sort of digital health-focused uh, place? It's just, do we need to sort of grow those sectors? There's the, there's the digital aspect, but there is a more, is there a, any physical implications as well? And where would they grow? Yeah, thanks, Chris. So it's, yeah, it's that clustering point, isn't it? around clustering around um, incubator spaces with the skills element um, and you know our, our traditional sectors that we're working on and, and, and developing and actually does that does that is that still relevant I suppose as a question is that still important to the strategic locations our understanding is yes and we should be trying to channel that energy but you know that's what we're you know those are the sort of questions post pandemic that we, we are asking ourselves now so um, I think there are lots of lots of food for thought on that um, I'm just going to bring Tracy in perhaps for the final comment. J just in terms of developing those sectors, as Chris has said, um, I suppose it's it's how, how we can do that together because I think it, it comes back to the point of it's not the council doing all of this and, and, and unfortunately can't. You know, we've got financial pressures as everybody has. So, you know, whilst we would like to be developing innovation hubs all over the place, given half the chance, um, we need to be looking at doing that in partnership with businesses so I suppose it's you know how people here today can you know speak to the council and look at opportunities really that we can do something in collaboration really to to bring these these opportunities forward for um for our communities thank you thanks Tracy okay anyone final comment sorry thank you Julian thank you uh Julian Dean Councillor just just want to repeat a point I made in the very first session which is also to consider the, the demand side um, and helping that um, to bring back to the, the story on Saturday of the green homes, um, open green homes, where a few homes opened up to show what they were doing in terms of retrofitting. More than 50 people went into the first home. There, there are people out there looking mm -hmm. to invest in renewable energy for their homes or looking to invest just cash that they've got because, you know, it was interesting Ed Potter's first slide showed us that there is significant private investment available, but, but th those people need help to... To, to invest in the right way and to find the firms that can do those jobs. So I think there's a job of work to do about about the uh, the demand side as well. Yeah, no, really, really valid points. Thank you.